Zach's Know Your Options, a weekly overview of unique option strategies and ideas designed to help you beat the market no matter which direction it's going. This week we're going to talk about protecting your profits with puts with Kevin Matris. Kevin is our top stock screener, market technician, options expert. Anything else you want to throw in nice. there? He's, he's up for it Keep as it well. Clean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, along the financial lines, but he's up for it. <clears throat> so you're talking about buying puts to protect profits. Right. Um, you've outlined before, if I recall correctly, how you can write calls to hedge risk and generate right. income. And in some of the screening articles that I've seen you do, you've talked about stop losses before. Mm -hmm. So how does this work into those concepts? You know, buying puts, I would say that's probably the closest alternative to actually putting in a stop loss order to protect your position. Uh, but first, before we get into this thing, let me just say that if you're going to be buying a put, mm -hmm. you make money when you buy puts if the market goes down. So in general, you know, if somebody is buying a put, he or she has a bearish outlook, whether it be a long-term bearish outlook, short-term bearish outlook. In short, he's got a bearish outlook. Okay. Uh, but again, puts can also be used to protect profits like we're talking about or to hedge against risk, downside risk. So how does, how does all of this compare to stop-loss orders? Well, with a stop-loss order, you are essentially putting in an order to sell a stock if it goes down to a certain price. So this way, if your stock is profitable and you want to try to lock in a certain potential gain, this is probably one of the most common ways to do it. Okay. So let's say that you bought 100 shares of a stock. All right. Let's say it was trading at $100, so you have an investment of $10,000, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Let's say now the stock is trading at 120. That is a $20 move, or in other words, you have a $20 or a 20% price gain. Mm -hmm. So let's say you want to stay in because you think it's going to go higher, but you're a little bit worried about the downside. Maybe it's earnings season like we have right now, so this is actually a good example. Mm -hmm. So you want to figure out how you can try to mitigate some of your risk. So anyways, if you're going to be using a stop-loss order, let's say you put in a stop-loss order at 110. Okay. So if it goes down to 110, you are now out. You've locked in a $10 gain or a 10% gain, which means you've made $1,000. However, though, the, the worry is that if, let's say, that there is a big downside gap, let's say they report bad earnings and the market makes a huge drop to the downside, mm -hmm. that stop-loss order is going to turn into a market order, which means you could conceivably get filled at an even lower price, below 10 bucks, and you're going to get filled at whatever the market gives you, uh, and even below that 110. So that is always one of the drawbacks. That doesn't happen a lot, but again, it's a real concern, especially when you're right around some kind of an important event, right? Now, if you're looking at puts, though, however, you're still going to be able to get some downside protection, but you have a little bit more protection against some big negative event happening to you. So let's use the same example. Let's say you have uh, the stock at 100 bucks, right? Let's say it's now at 120. You can buy a put option for protection. Let's say you bought a 120 put. Let's say it had maybe a little bit less than two months of time on it. And let's say you paid $600. So by having that two months of time, it's going to allow you to go through earnings season, but you also now have some very good downside protection. So at expiration, let's say the stock does drop to 110. Your put is now $10 in the money, which means you paid 600 bucks for it. That option is now worth 1000 That means you actually made or profited 400 bucks on the put. So let's look at each piece of this trade separately. You bought the stock at 100. Mm -hmm. It's now at 110. That's $1,000 profit on the stock. You bought your put, the 120 put, uh, at 600, right? 600 bucks. Mm -hmm. That put is now worth 1,000. You actually made 400 bucks. So in this case, your total profit on the trade is $1,400. So in short, you've actually lost less on the pullback, which means you made more on the overall trade. And in this example, this put gave you better protection and increased your profitability uh, more so than just using a regular stop loss. The drawback, though, in this scenario is that if the stock stayed at 120, 
or if you want to get technical, if let's say it stayed at least above 114, you would have been better off with the stop loss because all of the money that you spent on the put would have been completely lost or at the very worst you would have just broken even. So really the best time to use this is when you're expecting something big to happen. You really want to somehow mitigate the potential for a large potential pullback or a large potential loss. So depending on the circumstances, uh, if I'm understanding this correctly, a put might be a better choice for protection, but a stop maybe better in some situations also. Right, you know, no strategy is perfect at all times, but if you are looking for downside protection, especially in a very, very volatile market, I think buying a put is always better than not doing anything. And again, in certain circumstances, it will be more opportune than a stop loss. But again, usually you will find it to be more advantageous if you're trying to guard against something big. Because the key is in determining, when you're trying to figure out what to do, the key is really in determining, you know, um, where where your stop is going to be profitable and where you're really going to maximize your efforts. But you will be able to get a lot of protection, almost full protection, because you are going to be able to make money between your strike price and where the actual price of the stock is. Now, in a future article, uh, a segment, we're going to be talking about other ways to be able to mitigate risk. Uh, another alternative is to always write calls against it. But again, the, uh, the, the main difference there is that when you are buying a put, you really do have the ability of giving yourself full protection from your strike price all the way down to an extreme. Whereas if you're writing a call, you're generating income, but you have limited downside protection. We'll talk about that in a future piece. And I'll look forward to it. Too. All right. Buying puts to protect your profits. Just more information from Kevin Matris to help you know your options. With Kevin, I'm Terry Ruffalo.